This video is all about Victron battery monitors, and in particular, the BMV 712 Smart. What are they? How do you install them? How do you use them? And we'll look at alternatives, including something that may be a better choice for you. A Victron battery monitor, also known as a BMV, is like a fuel gauge for your battery, but it shows you a lot of information. There are three different ways that you can monitor this information about your battery. You can use the built-in display, the Victron Connect app, or you can connect it to a Color Control GX or one of the other Victron GX devices. Now, let's look at each of these three ways in a little more detail. First, the built-in display. By pressing the plus or minus buttons, you can scroll through the various readouts, including voltage, amperage, the minus means we are now discharging the battery, watts or kilowatts, depending on how much you're using. Again, the minus shows that we're discharging, amp hours, state of charge, and the time remaining on the battery before it's discharged completely. The select button shows you the history page, but as you can see, the display is so small that the information has to scroll by. The same thing for the setup button. So instead, let's use the second way to view this information, the Victron Connect app. It's available for free for iPads, iPhones, Android devices, as well as laptop versions and you just tap it to open it, and it will show you all of your Victron devices. Now, it's showing me my battery monitor that obviously this video is about. Also showing me my two solar chargers, as well as my Color Control GX. And since this app only shows Victron devices, my GrowWatt inverter doesn't show up. Let's go into the battery monitor by tapping it. The first time that you use the app, you'll have to enter the default PIN code, which is just six zeros. You can change the PIN code later if you'd like. And now all of the individual readouts are going to be available at one time on one screen. So starting at the top, we have the state of charge, the voltage, the current measured in amps, the power measured in watts, the consumed amp hours or how many amp hours you've used since the last time the battery was at a full charge and the time remaining before the battery is completely drained. Down at the bottom is a relay, which I'm not using, but it could be used to start a generator or control a, another secondary load. Say you have a load that only comes on when your battery is fully charged and it allows you to dump that excess power somewhere. Up here at the top, this is showing me that I am networked to the other Victron devices by Bluetooth. And in my case, that's the two solar chargers. And pressing the history tab takes us to the history page. And here you have data that's been gathered over the entire lifetime of the battery, or at least the amount of time that you've had the battery monitor in your system. Two of these uh, settings, last discharge and the time since the last full charge, refer to today's charging cycle. In order to keep this video to a reasonable length, I'm just going to hit the highlights right now, but I will go into details on all of the rest of these settings in another video shortly. The Trends tab at the top takes us to a trend page where you can graph two parameters. Uh, over a period of time, and those include voltage, current, power in watts, consumed amp hours, and even state of charge. Okay, now we'll go back to the home screen. The gear icon at the top will take us into our settings. And the top item on the menu is battery. And from here, you can program the battery monitor to work with the particular battery that you have in your solar system. And to change any settings, you simply tap on the number. It opens this pop-up window. You can use the plus and minus buttons, or you can just type in the number that you want. Now, let's go back to the settings page. The next item on the menu is the relay. There's a relay located on the back of the monitor that's useful for things like starting a generator, 
or running a load when your batteries are completely full so that you don't waste the excess solar power. And next are alarms that can warn you so that you don't overcharge your battery and damage it or uh, discharge your battery too far and damage it that way. Next are the display settings, and this refers to the built-in display of the hardware unit, not the display on the app. And next we go to miscellaneous, and these are the default settings for the shunt that comes with the BMV, but if you need to use a different shunt, you can make changes to it here. And next is the uh, VE Smart Networking page, which allows you to share data and synchronize between your Victron devices using Bluetooth. Okay, so that wraps up our second of three ways to view the information, the Victron Connect app. Remember, I am going to release a video with uh, more detail on the app. Now we're going to move on to our third method, which is the GX device. Now, one of the devices in the GX series is this Victron Color Control GX. It allows you to see all of the Victron devices in your solar system at the same time. Also, you could connect this to the internet, view and control your system remotely from anywhere in the world using the VRM portal. I'll also have separate videos on the Victron color control and the other GX devices, as well as the VRM portal. After using this for a few years in my home solar energy system, I almost never look at the built-in display. Based on that, I'll show you some alternatives later in this video. In my opinion, the Victron Connect app is by far the easiest way to program and view your information for most people. A GX device using the VRM portal is the best way to view and control the Victron gear remotely from anywhere in the world. And by the way, the VRM portal and the Victron Connect app are all free. The BMV 712 is really easy to install. It comes with all of these parts, the battery monitor itself, the shunt, the parts for mounting, and all the cables. The battery monitor can be mounted into a wall or into a box. I use this old jewelry box. Victron also makes a plastic box for the BMV and a larger box that can hold both the BMV and the color control. Depending on your situation, you may need to connect any cables before mounting. The main communication cable between the monitor and the shunt is an RJ12 standard telephone cable, which is supplied. And many people find that this is the only cable that they need. Optionally, you may also hook up a VE Direct cable or wires to the relay. The VE Direct cable allows the battery monitor to send information to a GX unit like the color control. The relay can be programmed to turn on or off under certain battery condition, uh, useful for things like starting a generator and also other uses. The shunt is basically a big resistor that measures the current flow in and out of your battery. It's inserted across the negative side of your system between the negative post of the battery and the, all of the negatives of your equipment, such as your inverter, your chargers, and so forth. It's rated at 500 amps, and you can substitute a larger shunt if you need it. This post on the shunt connects to the negative post or bus bar of your battery system. I added a disconnect switch here. And the other post connects to the negative side of your inverter and all your solar chargers, all the things in your system. This post can also hold several ring lugs and act as a bus bar. To power the printed circuit board of the shunt, connect the included cable between the positive of the battery and this push connector. The cable includes a fuse and drives very little current, um, like 0.7 amp hours per month. The second cable and connector are optional, but they could be used for a starter battery or a temperature sensor. The RJ12 cable connects here and to the back of the battery monitor. Okay, in this video, we've been talking about the BMV712 because that's the model that I have installed. But there are a couple of other choices out there. The basic models are the BMV700, and the 702. 
neither one of them come with Bluetooth built in and you have to buy a separate dongle. By the time you add that in, you're about at the same price as buying the 712. Now the 700 only works with one battery. The 702 does have the extra input on the shunt that allows you to add a starter battery or a temperature sensor. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that after using this for a while, I never look at the display on the BMV itself. I always either use the app or I use the VRM portal online. So with that in mind, if that might be the situation for you, you can get something called the smart shunt. If I was building my system over again, that's what I would do. Okay, with the smart shunt, there is no separate battery monitor with a display. There's no display at all. To see the information, you use the app or you use the VRM portal online. It has Bluetooth built in to talk to the app. And it has a VE Direct port that you can go right to a GX uh, color control or other device. It's just would save so much time. There's very little wiring. You hook this into your uh, to your negative side of your system and you're good to go. It does have the second auxiliary input for a temperature sensor or a starter battery. However, there is no relay. So if you need the relay, this won't work for you. It's also only $130 right now, um, and I think normally less than $150. So it's the cheapest choice out of all of these two. Okay, I think that does it for this video. I hope you found it useful. There will be a separate video, as I mentioned, on the uh, settings on the Victron Connect app for the BMV. I'm also working on some uh, videos for the color control and the VRM portal. And I'll see you in the next video.